Lester. So first we'll take a question from Gabriel Gonzalez with Cage Side Press. Good morning, Alistair. Um, I want to start with the big question. Obviously, um, it's a very weird thing because Walt Harris has so much fan support because of everything he's got going on. As his opponent, you're going out there to win, but can you just talk about personally separating the respect for him and then the competition? Well, I don't know. I just see Satisfied as a sport event. Uh, you know, outside of that, I, I uh, met him once. He's a cool guy. You know, we got along. Said it's just business. It's just a sport event. We're going to make a great fight for, for the fans worldwide. Uh, the fight was rescheduled from earlier in the year with everything that happened. Can you just talk about the adjustments that you had to make in order to peak for this week? Um, it actually went a little bit automatic. Um, you know, I had, a, I had a little break after the the postponement cancellation and then I just got back on the horse I actually think the break was good for me uh, your body can heal up a little bit you know mid camp so yeah no complaints there gotcha and finally you have a birthday around you know the time of the fight is it are you have you been saving all of the celebration for after the fight or are you gonna be doing anything during the week or before uh, we'll be doing it after of course you know work comes first and then afterwards we'll um, we'll have a glass of wine or whatever it's not going to be anything too big. I mean, I had a nice uh, party scheduled. Um, what was it June, June, some somewhere June 18 or something. But uh, because of Corona, that's uh, going to be pushed back till next year. So next year will be the big party. Thank you, Alistair. Next, we'll go to James Lynch. Go ahead, James. Hey, Alistair. Um, I know you spent part of your camp back home in the Netherlands, and then you spent part of it in Colorado. How was your camp structured as far as uh, heading into this fight? I was in, I was in Colorado, but um, basically, uh, you know, the world came to an end with the whole COVID thing. So I just flew back to be with my family, be with my mother. And uh, yeah, it, I, I, you know, I, you she continued to organize events. They, they basically asked me, do you want to fight? I said, yes. Life needs to go on. So I flew back uh, into the US. It was weird, you know, airports were empty because this was really at the height of the, all the craziness. Um, so yeah, it was like more like a break, like mid mid camp break. And then afterwards, I just resumed camp. It was good. I spoke to Curtis Blades the other day and he said basically the gym is kind of business as usual. A lot of you, a lot of the members are in the gym getting to train together. How much of an advantage is that? Because for a lot of gyms, uh, they're not getting the same type of training partners. Well, it's not business as usual. Um, it was definitely smaller groups, but I don't know. It's a, it's a real team, solid, solid guys, right? Everybody showed up. Everybody loved, loves to train. Everybody loves helping each other out. So I, I did have uh, my usual teammates there. And just two more for me. Uh, one of the fighters that you fought in the past, Fabricio Werdum, lost last week. And were you surprised to see him lose the way he did last week? Didn't look good. Um, didn't look good at all. I don't know. I don't know what, what his... Uh, reasons are, you know, it could be age, could be the, the layoff a year. Um, yeah, I don't know. Difficult to say, but nevertheless, he lost and I think he didn't look uh, too good. And last one, uh, obviously big fight here. Uh, a lot of implications for the heavyweight title pitcher. Uh, there's been talk of Stipe Miocic potentially getting his title stripped if he can't come back and fight. Do you agree with that? Would you like to see the division moving or do you think they should wait and have that trilogy fight with Daniel Cormier? Um... I think they need to keep it moving. Stripping is a very big word, right? Because that would mean refusal to fight. And when was the last fight? That's like a couple months ago, half a year ago. Um, maybe interim belt. Maybe a little bit better solution. I think stripping is very hard. And also he's a complex champion, right? He's uh, He's been doing it. He did it. I don't really think he's afraid or anything. Could be a timing thing, right? He's got all our, all our obligations. So um, they need to get uh, get that interim belt in there. Thank you for the time. All right, next we'll go with Luis Green. Go ahead, Luis. Hi, Vroom. Um, So you originally matched up with Walt back in December, weren't you? But obviously he had to pull out um, because of the situation with his stepdaughter uh, at the time. Um, what did you initially think of the matchup, though, back then? And, and how happy are you that you are able to get this fight rebooked? No, Walt is good. I mean, uh, strong guy, athletic guy. Uh, you know, prefer striking. I like striking. 
So I think the matchup will be great for the fans. Yeah, it was very unfortunate what happened, right? The 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 daughter Anaya Blanchard situation. Um, very terrible. Can only imagine being a dad myself. <clears throat> so um, yeah, it was to me not a huge shock that he withdrew from the fight, right? Of course, that's that's a natural thing. And now we're back on. So yeah, it's all good. I mean, uh, there's no rivalry. I like him as a person. And we're just going to make it a great fight, a great show this Saturday for the fans worldwide. And, you know, all of his wins have come via KO or TKO, and the last two have come in the first round. So how are you going to be approaching the fight on Saturday, and how do you see it going down? Well, he is definitely dangerous. He's explosive. So I have to be careful for that. I have to respect that. Uh, but to be honest, I'm not too worried. You know, I'm very well prepared. I, uh, yeah, I feel good. I'm loose. I'm, I'm, I'm relaxed. I'm flowing. And um, I'm working. I'm going to be working to finish this fight. Do you think perhaps maybe your your advantage, maybe your experience in the in the cage? What do you feel you might give you the upper hand on Saturday? Well, I have a lot of experience, right, that I bring to the table, but also uh, the submission uh, uh, victory skills. So yeah, I don't know. I have the strike and pedigree. I'm not too worried. I'm actually fairly excited. You know, also the the fact that there's no audience to me that's a new impulse. It's a new experience. Uh, I live for that stuff, so I'm very excited. And and just last one for me, you know, you said you're looking forward to to not having a crowd. What did you think about uh, some of the fighters being able to hear commentary uh, and that giving them the advantage in the fight? And also, what do you think about being able to hear your corner a lot more clearer? Um, well, it'll, it'll be just, just it'll be just like in a gym, right? Just like sparring. So it'll it'll be a little bit different. Uh, but in the end, the fight is a fight, man. You're gonna you're gonna go out there. You're gonna put on a performance. Your opponent is trying to put on a, por- a performance. So um, a fight is a fight. Just a little bit different. And 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 for that new experience, I'm actually very very excited. All right, thank you. Next, we'll take questions from Danny Segura. Danny, go ahead. Um, just to follow up on, on that question, you fought many times in Japan, and yes, there's a crowd there, but the crowd has always been been very quiet. Um, do you think you'll have some sort of edge going into this fight, given that you've fought in, in a similar environment? Well, it's not a similar environment because um, the the crowds in Japan are respectful, but they're not quiet. Uh, you know, if, if, if the fight heats up, they're, they're going to make noise, they're going to be there. And um, I, don't, I don't think you can... Uh, compare the two, you know, when you're fighting for 50,000 audience, which is just like a little bit more quiet, more respectful. That's you kind of compare it to no audience, right? Where you're gonna feel all the hear all the punches, hear all the noise, hear it even the commentators. Um, it will be different. Yeah, and you've been around this sport for a long time and have achieved a, a lot of great things. Um, I'm I'm curious what 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 still drives you to to compete because obviously you, you're still looking very competitive out there and, and and you look very good and you've been doing this for a very long time. Been doing it for a long time. Uh, I don't know. I love it. I love the lifestyle. I love improving my game. Um, you know, a fight is always a test. Um, you know, you build off that. And um, yeah, maybe also like what other, what other thing to do, right? I mean, I really enjoy. Going to the gym, improving my game, you know, helping my teammates. That is something that um, that I could see myself doing one day, becoming a coach, right? Passing on the, the knowledge. Yeah, but but not yet, right? I'm still in the peak, so I just need to keep going. I just yeah. love this culture. And uh, apart from enjoying and and actually, you know, going through the training and all that and fighting itself. Um, do you still have uh, title aspirations? Is that something you, you're still working towards to, or are th- at this point, are you just still doing it because you love it and, and, and this is what you do? Well, it's a little bit both. I uh, love it, but also I think, in my opinion, you know, we had two wins, then then came the, the last fight, the Rosestag uh, thing that, in my opinion, I got cheated by the, by the ref. Uh, perfect performance, very proud of that performance. But, you know, let's just take it easy. Let's just chill. Let's just cruise control and uh, get this victory, and then we'll figure it out from there. Yeah. And as far as uh, your activity level, I mean, it's kind of a hard thing to to project given the current climate. But um, it, do, do you want to stay busy or, or do you want to just fight when when the when the time is right? How are you going to proceed with your career? So I'll probably fight again later this year. 
you know, if the whole COVID situation is under control, remains under control. I don't know. They were going to do a show in Netherlands. I don't know if that's on the table or off the table, but uh, I expect to kind of fight again September, October, or November latest. Thank you, Alistair. Good luck. Now we'll go to Mark Schaaf. Mark, go ahead. Uh, hi, Alistair. Uh, here at Nederland for Veronica. This, uh... In het Nederlands, denk ik. Um, hoe is het voor jou? Uh, je bent een vechter die eigenlijk al alles heeft gezien, alles heeft meegemaakt. Hoe uh, maak jij deze Fight Week nu mee uh, met het coronavirus? Want het is toch iets wat je nog niet hebt meegemaakt. Nee, niet meegemaakt. Uh, het gaat goed. Uh, alles is onder controle hier. Het is natuurlijk wel wat anders. Er is iets meer afstand, dat soort dingen. Maar uh, ja, de spanning bou bou bouwt zich langzaam op. Het uh, ziet allemaal goed uit. Ja, uh, hoe is het voor je? Hoe is je voorbereiding geweest? Heb je je volledig kunnen voorbereiden, ook uh, ja, door het coronavirus? Ik heb me iets anders uh, voorbereid op deze wedstrijd. Omdat de gyms over het algemeen gesloten waren. Dus ik heb uh, uh, ja, wel, wel kleine groepen sowieso. Ja, op zich, uh, er was meer aandacht. De trainers waren minder, minder druk met andere dingen. Uh, ik, ben, ik zit goed in mijn vel, ik sta er goed voor. Dus het ziet er allemaal goed uit. Ja, wat dat betreft voel je, uh, ja, ben je klaar voor dit gevecht? Hè? Er zijn natuurlijk ook wat, 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 wat vertragingen geweest in, in alles, met het uitstellen van evenementen. Ben je zo fit als je wil zijn? Ja, ik ben zo fit als ik wil zijn. De, de, de vertraging, uitstel van het evenement, dat gaf mij een beetje een soort pauze. In die pauze ben ik naar Nederland gevlogen, even kijken hoe het met mijn gezin was, ook even kijken hoe het met mijn moeder was. Mijn moeder is uh, twee keer kanker gehad, dus die heeft, loopt risico voor, voor, voor corona. En daarna weer naar Amerika, want ja, daarna de, de show werd weer hervat. Stond voor 16 mei, dus ik ben na twee weken in Nederland ben ik weer naar Amerika gegaan. En uh, gewoon training weer hervat. Ja, je gaat tegen Walt uh, vechten. Was het makkelijk om dat gevecht voor aan te nemen? Na de moeilijke tijd die Walt heeft meegemaakt. Uh, heeft, je dat, ja, heeft dat iets met je gedaan? Uh, ik heb, ik heb uh, er zeker wel een beetje bij stilgestaan. Zijn dochter is ontvoerd en uh, vermoord. Uh, ja. Dat was geloof ik 19. Heel verschrikkelijk. Ik heb natuurlijk zelf drie, ook, ook drie meiden. Ja, ja je, je, je wenst dat niemand toe natuurlijk. Ik um, zie dit wel als een sportevenement. Ik zie dit wel als uh, we moeten verder. We moeten verder, we gaan ook verder. We ja. verder dus, uh, maar goed, er zijn uh, geen bad vibes. Ik mag wel, ik had hem uh, ontmoet in, in, voor onze wedstrijd in december. Eén keer hadden we een paar toe. Hele toffe gozer, hele relaxed jongen. Heb je het dan ook over, dat, uh, over die gebeurtenis? Nee, 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 nee. nee, nee. In deze, dat was voordat het gebeurde en daarna heb ik eigenlijk niet meer gezien of gesproken. Dus, uh, maar als ik hem zie, ga ik het niet daarover met hem uh, als hebben. Ja, is het lastig dat in de voorbereiding, er ligt natuurlijk heel veel gewicht op dat feit, hè, dat hij voor het eerste keer vecht. Uh, ja, na die traumatische gebeurtenis. Is dat lastig voor je? Uh, normaal ben jij natuurlijk uh, ja, de man waar het over gaat. Uh, de man ja, die hoger staat uh, uh, met meer ervaring. Nee, ik heb daar geen moeite mee. Uh, nou, het, is, uh, het is natuurlijk een tragedie wat er is gebeurd. En, uh, ja, of dat nou meer aandacht krijgt dan ik, uh, daar lig ik niet wakker van. Ja, nou, fijn om te horen. Wat voor gevecht gaat dit worden? Nou, ik denk uh, action packed, want hij is natuurlijk uh, best atletisch. Hij is een striker ook, dat ben ik ook. Dus uh, ja, veel actie. Hij is gevaarlijk in de eerste ronde, dus daar gaan we uh, specifiek voor uh, uitkijken. En voor de rest, uh, enjoy. Het wordt leuk, het wordt spannend. Ja. Laatste vraag, hoe is het met je lip? Uh, is die helemaal hersteld? Ja, je ziet er goed uit. Maar, <laughs> maar ben je bang dat het een, ja, een soft spot is? Uh, het was natuurlijk een ontzettende scheur. Nee, het was uh, zeg maar uh, na de wedstrijd, twee uur daarna was ik in het ziekenhuis. Het is gehecht door de plastische chirurg en uh, twaalf, het was nog een beetje dik daarna. Twaalf dagen daarna was het gewoon weer prima. Ik heb twaalf dagen daarna was ik in Korea, heb ik uh, een promotie gedaan op een UFC evenement en daar was het eigenlijk alweer, uh, was nog een beetje gezwollen. Mm. Maar dat is in de tijd gaat het weg en je spaart en je doet alles en uh, het is gewoon prima. Thanks Elisner, heel veel succes uh, overmorgen. We staan uh, voor je te juichen en uh, ik hoop je na de wedstrijd te spreken. Thanks Kill. Dankjewel man. And that's it Alistair, thank you so much. Hey, thank you.
All right, everybody reminder, if you do have a question, please raise the hand icon and following your question. If you just go ahead and click that hand icon again to put your hand down, that'd be great.